Hello everyone, my name is Yvan Fozzi and today I will teach you how to make holograms in Octane Render. So since my first tutorial I will introduce myself quickly. So I'm 28, I'm a 3D artist and art director and I started working freelance uh, six years ago after working for some agencies. I've uh, started my passion 14 years ago and uh, you can see some of the stuff I do on my website ivan.net so I do a lot of illustration and animations and uh, I try to post some working progress pictures so people can understand a bit how it's done and here is some of the trailers I made so uh, I won't show you everything because we don't have time for this but just to give you a little bit of a sample and um, so I work a lot with the materials and for this reason I want to uh, pay a tribute to Ahmet Oktar, which is the developer of Octane for Cinema 4D. Uh, since I work in Octane for three years he has become a good friend so um, his uh, help on understanding how the engine works internally has helped me a lot to develop myself as an artist. So yeah, thanks to him. And um, okay, so this is the the stuff that concerns us. Here is the material of the hologram. As you can see, it can be animated, and this is what we are going to see right now. So. Um, let me show you quickly. So this is the node based uh, system that allows me to create this material and to animate uh, a lot of parameters uh, in it. So this is what we are going to create today. And uh, for this, you need obviously Cinema 4D and Octane. So ciao for the webcam. <laughs> Let's go into the detail. Okay, so for this tutorial, it's best if you already have some experience with Octane. Uh, otherwise, I will try to make it as clear as possible, but it's probably, it's possible that I just skip some uh, obvious things, uh, but I will try to make it clear for everyone. So, um, how is the scene uh, right now? It's, uh, sim it's simply an angel with uh, some cubes, a sphere, and a plane so we can see how the material reacts. Uh, the first thing is to do is to set up your Octane the same way I do. So the first thing is that you can check my settings. I will explain them very quickly for the purpose of this scene. So uh, the max sample is uh, pretty low because uh, we don't really need much. Uh, the picture becomes clear around 300 already. So 600 is, per 600 is perfect. Uh, the diffuse depth and specular depth does not need uh, a lot, so just 4 and 4 will be fast enough. Uh, you, of course, you need the uh, alpha shadows, uh, since we will use the alpha a lot here. And uh, caustic blur doesn't matter, it could be 1 or 0. The GI clamp is uh, put on 1, because it's the real default, it should not be 1 million or whatever. Uh, or you may have a lot of fireflies. So um, the path thermal power can be uh, put up to 0.6. Uh, it will give us faster render time, uh, especially on this kind of scene where we really don't ca we don't care about uh, the shadows. Uh, static noise is best for when we will mo move around the the uh, live viewer, even if it can be disabled later if you want to use denoiser. The parallel samples and max style samples, samples right now are pretty low because we want a maximum of reactivity in the live viewer. We can put them uh, up or to the maximum when we will render a final scene. Uh, minimize, minima, minimize net uh, traffic uh, if you don't use uh, network rendering doesn't matter. Adaptive sampling you can put down to 128 because we are previewing and is best uh, this way. And one very important thing is to go into settings, into environment, and you put the environment light to black because by default I think it's around 50% of grey and we want to work on a black background by default. Uh, there is no sky, there is no sun, the goal is only to preview uh, the effect of these holograms. Uh, obviously later we can introduce an environment but right now it really doesn't matter. So um, that's about the settings and this way you will get the same result here. Uh, we can eventually press Ctrl D to get the project settings and here you can switch to linear, 
may be best if you are using the preview in the live viewer but myself I use uh, all the time the layer color mode so I don't preview anything here using the textures I really don't care I want to see my layers I don't use the viewport for any material reason only for uh, placing objects so uh, essentially even if my my UI is uh, pretty different I guess than yours uh, here we are really going to focus only on the live viewer and the octane uh, node system so that's about it uh, I hope uh, everybody will understand something and I will not lose myself in the process so <laughs> let's get started okay so I will start by creating a new material and apply it on the uh, different uh, objects and as I do so you can see that uh, the light is turning down in the scene obviously because there is no more um, light so let's start by uh, checking that our material type is diffuse because we will need the emission uh, channel and uh, we can select a texture emission and import the first maps so I've got two type of maps I've got my numbers which looks like this and I've got the grid which looks like this both of them are simple static maps uh, but could be uh, image sequence uh, the first one is just lines and dots and this part that creates the illusion of cubes and over there just simple no, uh, numbers and as I said it could be interesting to have it as an image sequence that you can import there into the node so now let's start by fixing this uh, projection so uh, I'm going to insert a projection node to the image texture node uh, put it into a box and uh, insert a transform node and this one we may go to times 10 so now we can see the repetition and we can see the lines a little better second step uh, we are going to duplicate this node and we are going to put the projection the same on both and this one we're going to insert a transform node and uh, put it like times four five so now to see both uh, we're going to put a add uh, a add uh, node so that the white of both maps are accumulating on top of each other and uh, now let's see a little better so we may turn down a little bit one of the map so this one is like more transparent than the others and the other is maybe a little strong let's put it like times eight because we can see later why uh, currently the projection doesn't work so well um, this is because we are in cubic mode uh, we can change that later to uh, tri triplanar but let's just start this way so um, now we're going to do the same with these uh, numbers so let's start again by just seeing now the numbers so we are going to put the projection, ta uh, projection node into cube into cubic so it means box is the same uh, the UV, the transform the add duplicate this one projection new add new transform okay now one of the nodes will be like times 50 so we can see big numbers and the second one will be like times 10 so we see smaller numbers okay pretty obvious pretty easy that's the same logic from one and the other now if we want to add them both on top of each other we can have one more add and uh, now we see everything together big numbers small numbers big lines small lines that's a start now next step okay so it's time to introduce the mask now so let's do this uh, by inserting uh, some uh, noise um, patterns 
uh, we're gonna need both uh, but let's start on the lines it will be more obvious so first thing to see something I'm going to plug it there and just work a little bit my mask so I will need a good contrast and something like that looks pretty nice so uh, the easiest way to do this is simply to add a multiply node here in the between of this so let's make some space and with and uh, now let's preview only the lines and let's put this noise over there so now as we can see this is the small lines and the small lines now are not visible everywhere uh, we could eventually also uh, duplicate this uh, multiply or I'll just create a new one sorry and uh, introduce this noise also on the big lines so, uh, so now just like for the theoretical things so for people who did not understand uh, add add white on top of white multiply add blacks on top of uh, whatever what value you had before so we are masking uh, these lines uh, with the blacks on this noise and now we can control like this intensity uh, for example the contrast and the gamma so then you have like just some region of the lines that are masked out okay pretty simple um, this noise right now is maybe not going to work everywhere the same because we have no information of projection so let's put a projection on it and again we're going to put box <coughs> and now we can see that it's very very small so well we can directly increase from there so 5, 10, let's just find something that works for us times 20 looks pretty nice looks okay I would say for a start so now let's do the same uh, on top on the on over there so what we're going to do is introduce again this uh, multiply node over there and over there and we're going to use a new a new noise because if we use the same everything is going to be masked uh, in different regions in the same region sorry so let's previsualize only the numbers and introduce this noise right there just to try again projection projection to box to be honest we can change to whatever we want um, and over there let's uh, increase about 50 so now we see like big zones that don't, don't doesn't have like numbers uh, I think this is pretty nice like this at least for a tutorial okay so let's continue by adding a uh, more level of details so the next step is to insert uh, more noise and uh, why not some um, marble so the marble or like even some frigid fractal let's try to see a bit some different results we get there so um, we need to introduce uh, transform and projection again so projection again as box transform let's see what we can do with that we can increase a little bit then uh, we break a bit the this effect and we're going to uh, contrast it so um, so now the only uh, way for me I see is using color correction color correction allows me to increase the contrast then I can increase this uh, brightness change the gamma maybe too high around there okay so now we've got some uh, strange lines we will say it will be one of our noise the second one will be a marble I'm being a bit creative here there is no real uh, good way or wrong way to do this so the marble again projection box transform we increase that increase that a lot 
so this will be for our height this will be oops something like like that we can make these lines smaller now uh, now we can change uh, the power and all the things color correction again color correction increase contrast the gamma we increased a lot uh, here maybe there is uh, too much octave yeah with less it's an interesting effect so we've got this one we've got this one and already we can accumulate both using a head okay that's one way uh, now I will just make some space for them uh, now we can include also uh, multiply just after this and we can insert another noise so let's go with this one again projection transform and the idea here will be to mask what we have behind so let's increase this uh, we're gonna increase the size of this and increase the contrast increase the gamma a bit change it for a box obviously which I forgot increase the scale of this increase the contrast again okay so now we are masking some zones that we don't want to see on this transform I can uh, change some uh, some parameters to make it a little more interesting okay yeah why whatever something like that already look a little bit like an hologram or something strange so now uh, we can again accumulate all of our work together and see a bit the effects So, now we've got some lines, you see, we've got some numbers, we've got different things. So, uh, one of the next steps now will be to introduce some colors, okay? So, let's make some space, this is our line and numbers, this is our uh, strange lines that look like some plasma energy or something. And now uh, comes the funny part to colorize this. So what we can do is first of all to introduce a multiply. So if we introduce a multiply over there, uh, we are going to need uh, da -da -da, RGB spectrum. So I will connect it there and then if I right click on it, I can cl select enable preview and now we can introduce some color so let's start with this now as a, now as a second color we are going to we are going to need a mix here so we're going to mix this into the first entry then the second entry will be another node which will be this time another color let's go with yellow And now uh, we need to connect uh, our numbers over there, number and lines. So the interesting thing now is that our numbers and lines are yellow and our lines from the bottom are pink. So that's one thing. And then we can use a color correction tool to um, Maybe contrast it a little better. And you see, we can define better what is orange, uh, sorry, what is yellow, 
what is uh, pink that's up to us now as a next step uh, I'm going to introduce um, I'm going to introduce transparency fall off and dirt so one first step will be to connect uh, our uh, wall uh, hologram thing into the opacity now we get a very more contrasted thing and we can see through the material we can see the lines through through it so as a next step uh, i'm going to introduce the fall off so for doing this i'm going to uh, make some space again up up so over there Connecting to the opacity and to the rest, uh, we are going to uh, introduce another add. And here we're going to add the fall off. So, um, let's do it. Right, here is the fall off on the, on the edges. So now uh, we can tweak it if we wish. Uh, to be honest, right now for the tutorial, this is pretty good. Uh, it does not need a lot of tweaking. Could be done this way or like even this way. Here we don't really care about realism because uh, we don't use the fall off for, uh, for the real purpose of it. We are just using it to get a hedge. Now on the next uh, thing, we're going to add the dirt. So if we check over there, uh, everything is connecting uh, like this is only two cubes, okay? And as we can see, there is no way to see the connection of both. So once again, gonna make some space. We can add over there. This goes over there. Now we're gonna introduce the dirt and our dirt, we're going all right so our dirt needs a lot of strength a lot of detail the tolerance uh, should be pretty high or turn inverts uh, normals and now as we can see we get this edge over there Unfortunately, uh, our dirt is inverted, so we're going to invert it here. And boom, now we get these edges. Uh, now, if we check uh, this dirt, for example, is pretty big. So as I have a face, the face uh, cannot work the same as uh, a box, so if I now increase or reduce, I will get the wanted results. In my case, I want something pretty small because I don't want the face to look too scary. So I need it to be very low and um, that's pretty much it. So now we've got these lines when two holograms touch each other or on the edge if they are like attached to a desk or something. And uh, that's it. So now let's make some space again so we can see what we miss Now it is really about tweaking the material, tweaking the different parameters, something a little better in terms of um, color could be nice. Something that match a little better together. We can change a little bit here our distribution of color. So something like that is maybe preferable. Um, this color also is a bit. Uh, it's not really nice. Okay. 
can increase uh, increase the light from it, light source. Looks a bit better, closer to my version. Um, <clears throat> now we can also uh, change, for example, uh, here we can insert like a color correction tool color correction node. Um, this will help us to create uh, the... Um, you see here these lines, we can we maybe want them more or less uh, visible. In my case I think something more subtle is more is better. Less is more. Uh, and we can even turn up or down the different numbers. So for example here I could take the big numbers push them a little more so we can see them better. We can even put them to 10. So now we see the big numbers a lot more. Uh, the small numbers, we can even turn them down so they will be less visible. Now it's really about tweaking to get the look we want. Most of the job now is done. It's really just uh, tweaking details now. So let's see where we can push that a little better maybe the lines also, maybe the small lines, big lines are nice, maybe we want to try to get them uh, kind of uh, on a better position, so vertically like this, uh, yeah something close to that, so now like the lines are like uh, more logically spread, uh, maybe the little lines are not enough visible, yeah, something like that start to look a little better. Now, if we want to imp inc uh, improve the transition of the lines, because they are also a bit uh, sometimes uh, a little not stretch because we are in cubic, but uh, we could introduce like the triplanar. So if I want to introduce triplanar over there, I will do it probably at this level here. So I will introduce it uh, over there. and over there. Now I select both and click single texture so you don't need to connect to each input just one is enough and uh, now we can just like uh, change this like to maybe 30 degree so the lines will uh, overlap each other a little bit on the edges so it will help where for example here if we are at zero you can see that the line is pretty straight and if we increase to like uh, 45 whatever the transition of the lines should be better oh wait at the condition I put also these two triplanar projection And there we go. Now we can see like the transition is more smooth. Like this is more like a straight line. And here we've got an overlap of the extremity of uh, both maps, which can help a little to blend the confusion. And uh, again, the precision here is doesn't have does not have to be surgical because uh, it doesn't have to be totally precise because we are looking at something creative and uh, it will also depends the angles we want it to be for now it's pretty nice so here we go with our first step uh, to make this uh, cool hologram and the second step will be to animate it so maybe I can uh, show you how I will do it and uh, maybe not enter into every detail about animation but uh, yeah so this first step is finished, let's go to the next one. So animating this uh, material is uh, actually pretty easy. There is two ways to do it. The first will be simply to introduce some keyframes. So for example, for this uh, nose masking the, um, 
the numbers uh, or let's go with this one which will be more obvious on the um, on the numbers if I just change for example uh, the uh, axis on the Y you can see that uh, the noise is moving and uh, so it's creating already one effect so we can uh, put this on a keyframe uh, for example at uh, the keyframe zero or the keyframe whatever you know the process is pretty uh, easy to put some keyframes and uh, that's one way to do it and then the also you will need to do this uh, also on the for example the lines so the lines will go up this is the small lines same for the big lines and uh, you see the ID we start to see a bit the effect uh, live um, one thing that uh, I animated also is the radius of the uh, of the dirt so it could give some sort of uh, vibrance you see uh, obviously this is uh, this is too much And uh, also, what I animated is the power of um, of every layer. So the numbers could be uh, bigger, or it could be uh, more more or less visible, and it could be like a pulse. So this is what I did. So every layer has a sort of pulse animation. Um, and uh, the same goes for the lines. So it's uh, pretty obvious, you see. So if the mask is moving, the every, la every layer is moving and uh, there is also this uh, vibration of uh, opacity that is changing, uh, it starts to get something pretty interesting. So, and also now we could uh, animate also this, uh, these noises, which are actually uh, the lines over there. So uh, we could tweak that, for example, um, that's our lines, one of the lines. This could be very slowly moving and uh, giving some effect. This one here might be more obvious. To give some idea of animation. Because this is because now animating one parameter is very easy, so gives a lot of options and uh, <coughs> so there is the option of uh, putting the keyframes yourself or uh, the way I choose is uh, using the plugin signal uh, it's by uh, Grayscale Gorilla and um, the good thing here is uh, I create a new and I will name this new for whatever function I want then I will put a signal uh, tag on it I will select the, f the thing I want to animate. So for example, uh, we want to animate uh, these uh, vertical lines. So I will select the parameter I want to animate, put it over there, select like a linear uh, spline. And uh, I will do additive, so it's keep increasing. And now if I play, basically uh, it's doing the job and the, the good thing is that it's procedural so at any time I can change these parameters I can connect them together with Expresso so um, that's uh, very easy to work this way and uh, if you see here I did uh, this for uh, the, po the power so it's just a ping pong effect here the same and uh, you get the idea one thing also I animated is the color. So the color is changing from uh, one to the other. Here in this case, there is a uh, less uh, saturation. It's very subtle. And uh, because I wanted to stay on the blue, and here it goes from pink to uh, purple. So um, this is the animation of uh, the original material that I have here. Okay, so that's how the material looks like once it's animated and rendered. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and before you leave I have two announcements to make that might interest you. The first is the release of uh, the resource page on my website where you can get materials, and tutorials and soon uh, Expresso setup and scripts. Uh, for people who want to learn more about Octane I released two pages uh, more and uh, this is about masterclass. So the first uh, date in English is in March. 
and this is about making a group of three to five and this is uh, like mentorship so it's about two to three hours per day and I will record the lesson so at the end I will provide you with a video so if you forgot something you can get back to it there is example scenes that I provide and we will uh, go we will uh, organize this with TeamViewer, Skype and Dropbox I already made one lesson last year but it was in French so this is really the first time in English if you have any question, just drop me a message over there, I will reply to you quickly. So, um, it's a, the lesson is uh, split in two parts. The first part will be over a week, and we will cover everything from beginner level to advanced. Uh, we uh, see things like the UV-less uh, workflow, and I go through all the nodes, all the channel, and a lot of workflow is including like to fight fireflies and noises. And in the part two, this is about um, creating complex materials mostly and uh, seeing a lot of different kind of edge distribution uh, as well as different workflows. And in the last uh, lesson, we will see uh, optimization. So it's how to manage a huge scene with a lot of assets, reduce the VRAM usage and uh, get faster results and uh, a lot of other things. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you want to see more, See you later on my website.